Dr. PK, would you like to kind of start us off before we jump into today's festivities? Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm starting out today, everybody, by saying again, happy birthday to Reagan and Megan. Uh, even though they are too young to celebrate all month long like us seniorpreneurs, we still think that they are special enough to have one week. And so we are flooding them this week with birthday wishes and love. We want them to know how much we appreciate them. And what are we giving them? What do they really, really want? They want us to be promoted. They want us to rank up so that we can bank up. So if you really want to give them a birthday gift this week, rank up and let them know that you appreciate all of the hard work that they give and that they give to us. Hello, Jonette, my sweet niece. She just joined the business and, and is gonna be a founder uh, to, tomorrow. Now, the word that I'm giving to you today uh, is just something that came to me this morning because I have been ministering since 4.30 this morning in prayer. Uh, happy people tend to be a little intimidating to the unhappy people, but be happy anyway. The winner seems to be pushy to a loser, but you better win anyway. When someone around you becomes ill, just pray for them and declare healing over them anyway. When someone loses their job, uh, just assist them and bringing them on over here to Tradera anyway. Anytime someone is down and out, lift them up anyway, because the way is a better way. We love you today, you all. I thank God for you, and we are looking to the hills for which cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord. Back you, Megan, but you know I can put if you want me. If that's not enough, I'll give you some more. <laughs> I know you will, Dr. PK. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone needs to have a Dr. PK in their life, just like everyone needs to have a, uh, a Reagan Lynch or a, a Dante Langford, or thank you, Bridget and Dante, for being co host every day and just serving. Thank you so much to Armida. You know that we've been hacked a couple times, but Dr. PK, we are unmoved by that, aren't we? We are unmoved. Absolutely. So I am super excited. Thank you for just showing up. You guys understand that part of it is just showing up, just being in the environment where there's great things happening. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and dive right in. I asked all of you to get on. Please stay until the end. I do have some um, something I really need to tell you that I'm super excited about. It is a milestone for our organization. If you wouldn't mind, just kind of shutting off your, your videos. Um, uh, Mr. Wells, you can have your video on if you like. I'm not sure if you want to or not, but let me dive in first so we can really get into um, the, today's coaching session. And I started using coaching because actually my partner who's on here right now always says, are you open for a word? Or, you know, like a word swap or word suggestion. So for those of you who don't know who I am, um, my name is Megan Lynch, one of the many, many leaders over here, one of the many leaders in our organization. Uh, most of you, you've heard my story before. You know that I dream big, I hustle harder. Uh, my goal is not to get to $100,000 a month. My goal is to, is to create legends, not just in this company, but to create legends in your own uh, family. And money isn't everything, but I tell you guys every day, it's right up there with oxygen and water. You need it to survive. It's gonna determine where you uh, live, what kind of air you get to breathe, what kind of food you get to eat, whether your kids are gonna have healthcare or not, what type of neighborhoods you live in. It, it almost determines everything. You know, but the thing is, is that even if we don't have, we can be around people who can give to us a wealth of knowledge. And then we are going to actually have to apply that. So every single day, Monday through Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern, we have a coaching session because 90% of our business over here in 
Network marketing, relationship marketing is about uh, personal development. It's about you believing what you say. It's not about what you guys say. It's not about you telling people about Forex and you can learn a skill set and make money every day. And, and it's not about that. It's about how you feel about what you say. Do you believe? And, and you have to start with your vision. We, we talked about that. So we're going to dive right in. Um, today is Why Wednesday, May 13th. And um, before we get into it, I do want to say a very, very big happy birthday to one of my best friends, uh, to my business partner. Absolutely love uh, this gentleman. He really is one of the many people who have poured into my life, trans uh, transformed my life, and really made me see that it's okay to, to want more. It's okay to uh, help people and also want to help myself in the process. At one point, I was giving so much of myself, I didn't have anything left to give. I remember when I got divorced and, you know, I, I had a spiritual leader. She came to my house every Tuesday, every Tuesday. And she actually gave me permission to be upset. She said, it's okay to be angry. It's not okay to be so angry that you break down yourself or destroy other people but we're gonna have emotions and things and he made it okay for me to say you know what i do want to be wealthy i was around so many people who made me feel bad about wanting more and i literally depleted everything that i had i was given so much that i really didn't have anything left to give and not only did he tell me um carla that she was uh, my spiritual mentor for a year and a half she came into my house every tuesday she became part of the family and she said you have to take care of the caregiver or you will have nothing left to give i'm gonna say that again because somebody's taking notes and i know lisa's writing a poem right now you have to take care of the caregiver otherwise you're going to have nothing left to give and on our way to becoming wealthy we are going to transform. We're going to go through so many things. So today, really, that's what I want to talk about because you guys have heard about my why, but my why was really developed and transformed just from the relationships that I had and the people that I was meeting. And one of those uh, influential people that I met, not only Robert Dean, but was one of my partners and we've been friends for over 20 plus years. We share so many experiences and our experiences tie us together. And I have watched this gentleman transform into an amazing, amazing, uh, not just experience teller or author, I have watched this individual transform into an amazing man that really, I, I truly look up to, and literally look up to, because he's like six eight. <laughs> <laughs> or, or or taller so i literally look up to this gentleman and the amazing part is is that today i'm gonna he doesn't even know i'm gonna do this but uh today i'm going to walk you through really his life and when i first met him and how he's literally transformed into this amazing leader enhancement coach amazing um, just individual all around and I probably I'm gonna be honest with you guys I would not be doing what I'm doing right now if he wouldn't have given me permission and, and the permission was you don't need permission <laughs> that's what it was you don't need permission to be great you just have to do it insights to living your most authentic life uh, he is amazing he's an author and an enhancement coach uh, amazing uh, leadership. So I'm going to walk you through um, many different aspects of his life. And I didn't tell him because all of our conversations are always organic. We are going to talk about just the vision though. Life is an art. You guys, you have to paint your own dreams. And I realized that you have to paint your own life. What do you want it to look like? You have to understand that nobody else gets to live your life. You're the artist, paint your picture, dream your own masterpiece into being when i started speaking it that i wanted to create a new wall street guess what things started to happen and i went through ups and downs and the ebbs and flows of this business but 
look where we are right now. Do you, got, do you understand that at the, by the end of this year, we're going to have 1,000 families, 1,000 families that have gone from just making it to moving into uh, really being able to just be creative. You know why you're going to be creative? Because you're not going to be worrying about how to pay your bills, how to send your kids to college, how to just feed your family. You're not going to be worried about those things. So, you know, when you're not worried about those things, all money does is allow you to be creative. That's it. You can buy up a whole bunch of stuff. You're going to get bored doing that. You know what money does? It allows you to be creative because you're not trying to create a, a way out of no way. You're just trying to figure out what do I do today? <laughs> Who am I going to help today? So the amazing part is, is that I became a social entrepreneur because of this gentleman I'm getting ready to in introduce you to. A social entrepreneur is not just focused on money. Hopefully, what I'm getting ready to transform all of you into over the next eight months is social entrepreneurs. Social entrepreneurs use their money to solve social issues like homelessness, poverty, mass incar incarceration of our youth, the incredible um, you know, death toll of some of our young people. But you know what? Really, it's just lack of hope. Do you know that you can give a person hope by just sending them a message? Maybe you just out of the blue, you might send them a, a card or a thank you or something. It doesn't have to be anything expensive. It just has to let people know that, listen, I care about you. So without further ado, we're going into our Why Wednesday. This is our transformation opportunities right now. Uh, Mr. Jason Wells is going to actually be our inspirational speaker on uh, this next Sunday, which I think is June the 7th. It's the first Sunday of the month. And I want you to notice very uh, something very interesting about his name. Go into the chat for me because you guys know I need participation. What do you notice about this gentleman's name that is a little bit different? Mr. Jason Wells, does anybody know, notice anything different? Go into the chat. The Y, okay. Capital Y. The Y, the Y, the Y, the Y. I could say it over and over again. It's always about the Y. Always about the why. And I'm super excited because all of you, I, my, I, my pray and hope for you when you get off of this call is that you understand that it's always about the why of you doing things. And um, I took this image from Jason. It is amazing. He actually put me on the journey of, of purpose. And that's what we're going to be talking about the first Sunday. You want to have every single soul on that, that call. We're going to focus on, you know, the passion, what sets your soul on fire, resilience, what pushes you through. You look at the opportunity. Are you prepared to capitalize on a window of opportunity? Look at the E, okay? What have you, uh, what have you been through? And I probably should be doing this in order, right? Preparation. How can you be there before you get there? That is important. How can you be there before you get there? service, significance over success. How do you serve other people? What makes you uncommon? You are not average. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm super, super excited to introduce you um, to, uh oh, my internet went out for a second. Can you guys still hear me? Dr. PK, can you still hear me? I hear you, I oh, hear you. Sorry, my internet went out for a second. I think we're gonna break 500. <clears throat> this is how I remember uh, Mr. Jason Wells, he's off to the side. Um, <laughs> when I was in uh, college, we used to call them the the untouchables. Literally, I know he's gonna he's gonna he's probably laughing right now because I'm talking about this. But when I was in college, uh, imagine a group of young people coming in. Right, most of them were like six eight, you know, the basketball players, and then you had the basketball players with the with the other, uh, the, the other untouchables at the school. And it used to be so amazing to see them come in. They would come into a party, pretty much shut the party down. Everybody would like, oh my goodness, they're all here. 
And then they would stay for like 10 minutes and then they would leave. <laughs> and the party would kind of like die down. And Jason and I share a very, very special bond. You guys have heard me talk about one of my best friends uh, getting killed when I was in college. Um, and um, Zed, he's off to the right. I don't know if you guys can see right here and over here. But we share a very special bond because both of us, you know, Zed was my one of my best friends in my first year of college. I was kind of lost because I didn't have my twin sister. It was the first time I was ever away from my sister, ever. So when I went to college, I was kind of by myself. And I had a really, really tough time. And I wanted to go home. My dad was like, nope, you're not going home. My brother talked some sense into me as well. And then I met Mr. Jason Wells and, um, and Zed. And they became instantly my friends. They would literally take me home, right? Drive me hours home and then drive back because I didn't have a car and I didn't have a cell phone. And I just wanna say thank you. I don't wanna get all emotional, so I'm gonna segue to my partner. And um, we're just gonna be looking at uh, Jason through his transformation because I met Jason Wells as the athlete. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce you to my partner, uh, to my closest friend, uh, Mr. Jason Wells. Are you out there? You may just have to let me make Yeah, I'm I'm here. I'm here. We gonna we're gonna fight about those pictures. <laughs> I said I'm not even gonna tell them I'm gonna post those pictures, but um Oh man. <laughs> so Jason, thank you so much for um joining us. We have so many uh, awesome conversations. And if you don't mind, uh, we're gonna kind of take a transformation just through Jason Wells as the, the athlete, uh, the father the coach, the man, the experience teller. That's what we're going to talk about today. Um, but first and foremost, if you wouldn't mind just kind of introducing yourself to the people, just tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe where you're from, um, you know, just your experiences that you've had that have led you to this point. But I'm going to talk about those individually. So don't feel like you have to go into it too much because we're going to look at each aspect of your life. But if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. Yeah, sure. First off, let me just say thank you to everybody. As I'm looking at the participants, I see almost 500 people on here, and which is amazing in itself, because I know just listening to the different places across the world, I heard Dubai, I heard Granada, I heard Jamaica, I heard California. Like, first off, that is awesome in itself. So thank you for all of you. Um, supporting Megan and supporting me and just being here ready to grow and eager to grow. So uh, I like to refer to myself as a little boy from Cleveland, Ohio. I heard a couple of Clevelands on there, 2216 in the house. Um, you know, I, I'm a little boy from 93rd and Union. And, as, you know, especially for those people who are in Cleveland or know something about Cleveland, uh, I like the way that I like to put it is, um, I'm from the hood. I'm from whatever you've seen in a movie or whatever you've experienced or been through, like I am from that. And growing up on 93rd and Union, you hear a lot of people that tell you what you can't do and not a lot of people who tell you what you can do or what you uh, are going to be great at. And so, uh, can you hear me, Megan? I hear a couple um, things. In yeah, the can you, can you it's, it's a little bit muffled and low, just a little bit. I'm used to yelling, but. It's just a yeah. Is that better? Might oh, might be my internet. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can you hear me now? Um, nope, that's not better. <laughs> that's lower. Yeah, that was lower actually. Is, is this better? It's a little bit lower, so I don't know if it's my hold on. You might just have to act like you're on the basketball court. <laughs> it is a little lower for some reason. Yeah, they said it's a little low. All right, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's try one more thing. And you may not need the, you may not need a mic if you have it. We yeah. just broke 500, mate. How about yeah. this? 
Yes. 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 All right. <laughs> that's that's right. All, you're doing. all right. Perfect. Um, so yeah, and I, you can talk loud. <laughs> no, I definitely don't want to go into my coach voice, but um, I hear a couple of people that that heard me say that I was from Cleveland, Ohio. So yeah, I'm I'm from 93rd and Union. For those who know southeast side of Cleveland and growing up where I grew up you have a bunch of people who tell you what you can't do but not a lot of people telling you what you can do or what you know the things that you can pursue or you can achieve it's a bunch of people telling you you're from here so you're not going to do this or you look like this so you're not going to do this or you didn't go to this school so this here's what you can't do and so for me uh, I just at a very early age, and I can't say that I noticed it then as I'm, as much as I notice it now, but it, I really became attached to vision. I became attached to um, what you can see. And like T.D. Jakes was a guy that I follow a lot, and he makes a, a statement that says children will be what they can see. And I feel like a lot of time, you know, you get caught up into different things because all we see is the negativity around us or the pessimism around us, pessimism around us, and we don't see those visuals of things of greatness, uh, things of high performance. And so, yeah, for me, it started with a little orange basketball and me loving playing with my friends. I didn't, I didn't play to get a college scholarship. I didn't play to even go to college. I was playing because that's what me and my guys did. And because we did it often, we got good at it. Because we got good at it, opportunities started to present themselves. And when opportunities started to present themselves, I started to very intentionally capitalize on those opportunities. And so that led me from inner city Cleveland to being able to go to a private school from going to a private high school to getting a college opportunity and getting a college scholarship and then from playing in college to literally seeing the world. So most of the places that are represented on this call, I have in some way, shape or form been to because I can put a ball in a basket, which is amazing to me. So that's it in a nutshell. And, and now it's everything that I learned on the basketball court and how to transfer those things into life because that's all it is that's all athletics is is a is a pathway for life uh -oh, did i meet you uh oh jason you still there hold on yeah i'm here i stopped talking oh, okay <laughs> you're, so, <laughs> you're so funny um so the amazing part is is that we i just want to have a conversation because you and i we're never scripted we have a conversation all the time and one thing I want to really um, talk about is the fact that you know what my why is. Some of these students were in my uh, class and, you know, I was, they called them the most organized crime group, right? They were called the Get Money Crew and they gave them 212 years. Now this kid right here, by far, I'm telling you, this was probably the smartest kid I have ever met <laughs> and they or they were organized right and then they have them looking all crazy on here but they ended up giving them 212 years so you know like i i put all my passion into figuring out how i can redirect their hunger and their passion and you came from cleveland from the hood you watched a lot of crazy things happen you lost friends we lost our best friend when we were in college and it was a lot to to deal with and I said, you know, a lot of these young people don't even get to make it. I'm very visual. I don't know what's up with my internet, but you, I'm very visual. And I said that a lot of times, Jason, you know, why do you think so many people right now, young people, are not making it to the point where they look like this, where they're suited and booted, they're able to graduate, they're, they're, if you look at this picture at the very bottom, these were my first boys in my program, my young men that rocked with me all the time. And funny story is one of these young guys, his mom is now in my program. She just came aboard the program. I didn't even know it. You know, we had a conversation and she was talking about how her son was getting ready to graduate from, from college. And it's amazing that these young people can become such 
great influencers if if they can just live what was it that really got you to the point where you could become great because you've you've traveled all over the world spoke to millions you know you've spoke to a lot of people what was it that allowed you to kind of overcome that situation so you can get to where you are now yeah just feel like not enough whether whether you're athletic or whether you're not athletic that doesn't matter to me but i feel like enough not enough there's enough vision that's going on throughout the areas where the vision is needed most and so for me, I was fortunate that I could shoot a basketball and, and my ability to be able to shoot a basketball opened up different experiences for me. They they put me in different uh, environments outside of the ones that I saw every day if it was going to school or playing in the neighborhood. So because of my ability to be able to play basketball, it opened up new doors. But I feel like those doors aren't necessarily open to especially young men and women who don't know that those doors even exist. And I, and I was one of them. I wouldn't have known that those doors existed if not for basketball. And so I feel like a big part of vision is being able to see something that you aspire to be. And I feel like another big part of that, specifically talking about young men and women that are growing up nowadays or, or whenever is, they see this representation. So a couple slides back when you had, man, you're going in your bag with pictures. Um, <laughs> um, you know, the, the representation of the men in the suits, you know, think about the mentality that, uh, I'll, I'll call it like it is, I'll say the hood. Like think about the mentality of young men and women that are growing up in challenging situations, let's call it. They see, someone in a suit or someone dressed up to a T and because of what they've been exposed to, they don't even see that as an aspiration. They see that as a sellout or they see that as something negative. And so I, I feel like a huge part of the enhancement of these young people is to do what I call, I like to call it making cool uncool. I'm oh, sorry, making uncool cool. And so like, how do you take these things that may come across as uncool to you they may see a guy in a suit and think that's uncool but how do we get to a point where we show them that uncool is actually the cool thing to do and for me i feel like it's a big 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 thing for them to hear and see and be able to touch and feel and have conversations with people who look like them talking about money like, I, I know we have different nationalities and everything re uh, represented on this call, but for me, I feel like that's a huge point is to see people who they may have presumed as uncool in cool situations. And let's be honest, like, they're the focus on money. They like money. So now how do we take their passion of money and turn it into something that can be a transformational thing across all parts of their life? So... And it makes sense. I mean, you have to, if, if you want to become it, you're going to have to be able to see it. And I, absolutely making the uncool cool. And in our industry, we deal with a lot of negativity when it comes to our industry, that, that we have to fight the fact that people don't understand how, how individuals could come together and unite for one common focus, which is financial freedom, time freedom. And it's not about the money for me, but it is about the, the time freedom, being able to live life on my own terms. And I noticed that a lot of the boys in the, these pictures that I was showing um, you guys, a lot, of these, um, a lot of these boys, their parents were working. Like they were working, their parents were working. I don't know what's up with my internet, but they, they were kind of fending for themselves. So I thought, man, if I can show the young people how to make money legitimately, but then I started thinking, then these families, all of you guys on the call right now, we have an obligation not to just our kids, but we have an obligation to our, our grandkids and our great, great grandkids that maybe haven't even been born yet to leave a legacy. So we're gonna to have to become the best people that we can. And when I have these coaching sessions, really, Jason, it's for, it's for me. It's because I have to remind myself. And like Cat Williams said, sometimes you have to encourage yourself, right? 
in order to go to the, the next level. So just the transformation of how do we really become the men and women that, you know, that we, I feel like we were called to be, what is it, what, what is it going to take for us to really transform from, you know, you talk about it too, um, from, and I forget how you put it, but remember we talked about, you said something about transforming from, you don't just become a man. Remember that conversation? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you kind of speak on that just a little bit? Uh, it, it goes back to my very first talk or speech that I gave, which was five or six years ago. And I, it was for a group called the Elite Gentleman Club, which is an after school group when I was living in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, just teaching young men different things across the board, chivalry, um, tying a tie, your dinner, your placements at the dinner table, different things like that, just real skills that are pertain that, that are like that you're doing in life. And they asked me to speak on what makes a gentleman. And yeah, I, I went back to the quote of you're born a male, but you grow into a man. And I took that quote and took it a step further. So yes, you're born a male, you grow into a man, but you choose to be a gentleman. And for me, that means it doesn't matter how old you are. And most times, as Megan mentioned earlier, I can't remember exactly the phrase that you used, but I think you said applied experience. Like so often we talk about experience, experience, experience. And yes, experience is, is a heck of a teacher if and I like to say evaluated experience. If you've evaluated that experience to determine how it's going to continue to move you on your journey, then it becomes valuable. But just the sake of going through something doesn't mean anything if you continue to do the same things that keep you in this place of scarcity. And so, yeah, that's the conversation that we got on for that. And, you know, I hope I'm not jumping into your next question or anything, but for me, and you know how big I am about the why. And, and super quick story, uh, I had my mom, I'm 43 now, and I've been living in St. Louis for a little over three years. And just before my 40th birthday, as I moved here, I wasn't even here three months. I called my mom and I just told her, thank you. Thank you for whatever inspired her to put the why in my name. Because after, at that time, 40 years on this earth, it was total validation into who I am, what I believe, why I'm here, what I'm here for, and most importantly for me, who I'm here for um, is the why. It's all about the why. So I consider myself to be a person of purpose and how much I talk about purpose. But now as I continue to learn myself, I realize that that person, that, that purpose stems from a vision. What's, what's the vision of your life that you see and this is what I do on my coaching calls now so I coach everybody from 16 year old basketball players to senior level executives in fortune 100 companies and we all start off at the same place and I'll start you this team off with the same place what's your vision and when I say vision I don't mean the half-hearted oh you know it really doesn't matter how much money I make or I just no. what if you could paint a picture of your life what does that life look like so so that's an activity that we'll do starting now and and however often we're back on these calls but that's a that's a project for you that's an activity for you is take that paintbrush and start to paint your ideal life in 10 years, in 15 years, what does it look like? How often do you work? Who are you working with? Are you, do you, are you making money when you're on vacation? Are you only working four hours a day so you can have time with your family or do the things that you want? Like paint your perfect life. And from that vision, everything will work backwards now. So, okay, I have this vision of 10 to 15 years. And now how do I bring that into the next three years so maybe that's not the long-term vision but in three years here's what i'm going to do and now how do i take that three years and bring it down into three months and now how do i take that three months and bring it down into one week and one week down into one day and when you start to do that working backwards from your vision on those days that you don't feel like it you're reminded of your vision and you know and you're entitled to those days i wake up at 4:30 most mornings and there are plenty of mornings that I don't feel like waking up, but
But on those mornings that I don't feel like waking up, my immediate thought is, what's my vision? And if I stay in this bed, then I'm ultimately taken away from my vision. And most of the time, that's enough inspiration for me to get up. Wow. I think I've never heard you put it like that before, because remember, we talked about really knowing what you want. And yeah, and I really didn't know what I wanted. And we would talk and talk and you're like, okay, then start with what I don't want, because I knew that really, really clearly. And I was speaking that into existence, into my life. All I talked about was the things I didn't want. And both you and I have been divorced before. And we've talked about Mm -hmm. that. And we've talked about being kind of imperfect people um, in an imperfect world. And we kind of have to figure it out along the way. But I've never heard you break down the, the vision like that. And I never even thought that to go 10 or 15 years. And honestly, Jason, that's where I would go with young people. I would say, where do you want to be in 10 to 15 years? Remember you told me some of their careers haven't even been started yet. And to break it, to go backwards like that from 10 to 15 years to three years to three months to what do I need to do each day that might send me to that point. That is phenomenal. And and to dive just a tad bit deeper into that, and I don't want to go too deep because I want to continue the conversation, but like, especially if you're talking to young people. So again, I I coach several teenagers who, because they're so programmed to answer these questions in certain ways, you know, if you go back to three or four years old, what's the first question that you were asked when you were in a school environment what do you want to be when you grow up like that's that's the silliest question in the world especially and and just happened in the conversation that you were making reference to if you were to ask a 20 year old now 15 years ago in 2005 as a five-year-old what they wanted to be when they grow up there are jobs that exist now in 2020 that didn't even exist when they were answering that question so how, how can you say, what do you want to be? So when you're thinking about your vision, you're not thinking about what you want to be doing or or like an occupation. You're thinking about the value that you want to bring to the world. Because now when you're talking about the value that you want to bring to the world, what you do can be anything. So for me, when I meet people in the airport, I travel a ton. I'm on airplanes, not so much now, but I'm on airplanes and I'm around people. And when people ask, the most general question. Oh, well, what do you do? Well, my immediate question, my immediate answer to that question is I add value to people's lives. And then when they, they either look at me like I'm a jerk, which is not most of the time, but now that, that answer in itself takes somebody to another level of intrigue. Oh, well, what do you mean you add value to people's lives? Well, that depends on who I'm, who I'm in conversation with, who I'm in connection with. Sometimes it's on a basketball court. Sometimes it's in a boardroom. Sometimes it's, you know, just having a conversation in the airport. And so now when you're talking about, it's like there's so many different things, but they all boil back down to the simplicity of principles that we're all, most of us are rooted with. We just lose track of it. We get caught up in this in society's and culture's way of thinking. And we just get covered. And so when people talk about find your purpose, find your purpose, I'm not one to say find your purpose. One reason is because I believe you are your purpose, which is why most people don't find it. Because when you hear that phrase, you start to look externally and you start to look for, you're looking under rocks and you're looking behind doors and where's my purpose? Where's my purpose? Well, the reason that most people don't find their purpose is because they start looking externally. Your purpose is internal. So that's you. And, and you, most people struggle with knowing why they're here is because they don't know who they are. And when you start to tap into the self-reflection and, and vulnerability and authenticity of who you are and, and your pains and the things that you've gone through that you think the rest of the world doesn't care about, and you start sharing those things, now, you start to tap into purpose. And that, that that will lead to vision. It's all a big circle. Like none of it is not linear. This is not linear. Your purpose is your vision and your vision is your purpose. It's all intertwined. My favorite number is the number eight, infinity. It's all intertwined. There is no separation once we really get into it. 
You know, and that's the, the most amazing part is um, we are going to have to, we talked about it. We're going to have to go through those uncomfortable moments, you know, and to, in order to get to where we, we want to be. And some of our most uncomfortable moments, <laughs> for me, <laughs> we've talked about this. You and I have both been divorced. Your kids are in another, um, you know, state. The most amazing thing, one of the most amazing things about you is the fact that it is uncomfortable to be a, a parent <laughs> and when you're away from your kids because you are a very involved father. Uh, if you guys can see his son down here is similar to my son, except mine's 18. And I've called you like, I don't know what to do because number one, I can't teach him how to be a man. I can give him values. Um, he did write me this, this note on Mother's Day. He, he drives me a little bit batty a little bit because he's trying to come into his own, do his own thing, struggling with mom, you just want me to do what you're doing. And I don't, I just want him to be, you know, I want there to be some kind of focus, but he had written me this, this note, Jason, for Mother's Day. I walk into my house. My entire house is clean. I, most parents are, our love language is acts of service. And um, that's how I am. I don't really need you to buy me flowers or anything like that. I'm not really a gift person. I'm more of an act of service. So he cleaned my whole house. I walk in, there's a huge whiteboard that I just bought and he had written on the whiteboard, happy mother's day. And he said, mom, even though we fight and argue a lot, and then he put it in all caps, I mean a lot. I hope that you know, I love you uh, to, to the point I can't explain. I appreciate everything that you have done for me and Amaya. One thing I noticed with you throughout my whole life is that you were always bound to make a way for all of us, even when there's no way. I hope you know that I'm always wishing you the best for you, no matter what we go through. I hope you have a great day, legend, because our top position over here right now is legend, 100,000 a month. So he knows I'm grinding, not for the sake of money, because yesterday he said, you're over here making 50,000 a month and you not even thinking about spending any money. He was like, you got checks over here all piled up. <laughs> and I said, because it's not about the money for me right now. It's really about the why that we just talked about. And it's going to be uncomfortable because right now I'm in an uncomfortable state in my parenting because I'm focused on parenting an 18 year old son when I'm a mother. And of course I'm going to be afraid because our young boys are an endangered species <laughs> for real. Mm -hmm. And it makes me very nervous, especially when I don't feel like I have, you know, a, a man influence that he's listening to. You know what I mean? There are people around, there are great men around, but not necessarily people he's listening to. So um, we're all reading, we all should be reading the shark and the goldfish. Everything <laughs> that's out over here is the ability to wake up every single day and make a decision to be um, a shark. And this book changed my life and I read it with my students. You guys, you know that. But how do you, how do you manage becoming great, basically? Walking in your purpose when there are so many uncomfortable situations. Because you're a great father, but I know it's not comfortable right now. All the time, yeah. it's not always comfortable. How do we get through those points in our lives where we're just trying to be parents and husbands wives and try to go after our hopes and dreams because this business requires a lot of personal development energy sacrifice how did you sure. manage that those uncomfortable points i'm gonna I'm tap into this first i saw I, I hope i'm pronouncing her name correctly but i saw kiana wrote a message talking about she's reading so that's that's actually i got two boys so he just never had a haircut before so just for everybody's clarity, I, <laughs> that is a little boy with all the hair. Um, he likes to call himself Troy Palomalu. So um, just, just wanted to throw that out there. And yes, I don't know how you found that picture, but he, no, nah, you're good, Keanu. <laughs> um, he is reading A Shark and the Goldfish, and, and, which is super cool because I know that's where you guys are rooted in your business is being sharks and understanding the principles in that book. Um, 
And so, Megan, to, ask, to answer your question, um, it's still, and, and I'm not being cliche when I say this, but it all goes back to the vision. And so for me, my vision in 10 to 15 years is to have raised two quality young men that have now gone out into their own lives and taken some of the things, because let's be honest, when you're growing up teenager, young adulthood, you're not, you're not necessarily taking and applying all of the wisdom that you're given from different people in your life. Sometimes you get it and you still need to and have to go out and explore things on your own. And some of those things turn out great. And some of them turn out like, oh, you know, maybe could have made a different decision. But my vision for them is to be not only the father that I had, because I was fortunate enough to be raised by a phenomenal man and have phenomenal men in my life from uncles to coaches to just other people, but ex also expand where my father came up short. So as much as my dad taught me everything awesome about family and love and, and uh, being domestic so I can cook, I can clean, I can take care of my own house, I can do all of these things. My father showed me all of those things, but my father's shortcomings came when it, you know, it was time to talk about finances and things like that. He didn't have that to give that, and I can't fault him for that, and I never have, but I want to take what his shortcomings were and expand on them so now my sons are a step further, two steps further, five steps further than where I was. And so for me, it, it goes back to vision. They are a part of my vision. And what I see for them is not related to what they do. It's related to who they are. I, I want them to be rooted in principles. I want them to be rooted in integrity and respect and discipline and hard work and honesty and accountability. Like I want them to be rooted in those principles. And if they're rooted in those principles, it doesn't matter what they do. They'll always be attractive and be able to add value because of who they are. Amazing. You're absolutely, I mean, and it's, it, you do make it so clear. Someone said um, <laughs> habit stacking. Someone yeah. else said the viewpoint James is clear. <laughs> yeah. The viewpoint is, is very very clear and that's anytime that i don't quite know what to do i've learned how to say i don't know what to do but then i also call you because i'm open and a lot of times people are not open to suggestions as a mother uh it's it's hard because i feel like i have to remember that my son is listening but it's also in the delivery <laughs> that i give yeah. it to him because we're imperfect people and we don't have handbooks on how to be great parents. And it is, it is really, really challenging for me right now. I, I think people think the biggest challenge for me right now is doing what I'm doing. This is simple, you know, try parenting an 18 year old male who is phenomenal in his own right, but very much set in his own, own way. So I'm, I'm navigating that world right now, but I do want to thank you for just like, giving us those experiences and i always wonder how do you even have time to be um jason wells the, the coach because you <laughs> to young kids i i pulled it out. i pulled these pictures out yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but 70 percent of kids quit sports by the age of 13 and they've been in it they but think about it if they quit sports by the age of 13 most of them start playing when they're five so they've actually been in it for a long time and they can make a decision that, you know what, I've been in it. What, what is that? I can't do math, small math, right? Eight, eight nine years. Yeah. I'm, eight, I'm nine, eight or nine big years. Numbers, big numbers now, but yeah, eight or nine years, people, Jason, they quit our business over here in eight or nine days. They will mm. go to school for four years, spend up all their money, get degrees that they do not use and pay back, $2 a day interest on student loans, because that's what it is. That's why we can't get rid of our student loans. I'm paying my student loans off this year, all of them. Even though I went to college and I had a full ride, I didn't my first year. I walked on the volleyball team at Indiana State. For those of you guys who don't know, I played volleyball in college. Um, and I everybody in my family plays sports. I got a nephew who played for the um, NBA. He was playing, but I played 
volleyball and I had to work my butt off it to not quit. And over here, people, one guy asked me, are you sure you're going to be able to keep this up, Megan? And I don't, he didn't ask it in a mean way or anything like that. But one thing that I feel like that we, we have gotten, Jason, as athletes is consistency, hard work, sure. dedication. We don't quit. What would you say to, to the almost 500 people who are on here right now about, yeah. you know, get this business and not quitting? Yeah, let me, I want to circle back just to your statement about, you know, you raising uh, an 18 year old young man um, and the challenges that you have. Yes, somebody wrote in the chat, parenting is challenging. Parenting is challenging. Uh, but for you, Megan, and, and you and I have had this conversation before is as much as you can, not just you, but for all of us, surround him and them with with those people so you know i've talked to Dev a couple of times and it's too far and few between uh you know i think back to my grandma and my mom talking about uh you know it takes a village of course it takes a village but think about where our villages are now our villages are not ones of connected and and trust and love our villages are separated divided and, and feel, feel full of conflict and so you know miss johnson who used to be another set of eyes on you when you were growing up. Ms. Johnson is now peeking at you through the blinds, just hoping that you never run up in her house. You know what I mean? And so right. to, to, to recreate that, and I do feel like certain things, and I'm very cautious about wording things, saying we need to go back to, even in this time, when we get back to normal. I don't want to go back to where we were, but you do have to appreciate where we were to be able to push forward. And so, but one of the things that I do feel like is largely missing across the board is that it takes a village mentality. So I just wanted to throw that in, you know, you surrounding him and them with people who can pour into them in ways that you can't, because that's one of the biggest things and I'll use this as a transition into coaching. This, that's one of the biggest things that I've learned from coaching is I can come in and say something in an hour or a day or a week, and all of a sudden the kid responds to it, and the parent is looking at me like, like what kind of magic did you throw? Or the kid will come back like, mom, 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 guess what Coach Jason said? Guess what Coach Jason said? And, and she's looking at him like, I've been telling you that for five years. And right. so a huge part of that village is having other voices because they hear our voices all the time. I tell people all the time, God forbid the day that I have to teach my son or I have to give, pay somebody to teach my son's basketball when I can teach them everything they know, but at the, they, won't, they don't want to hear it from me. So I have to bring in somebody that believes in what I believe in that's saying something, the same thing or similar but it's received in a different way. And that's the same across the board, parenting, coaching, teaching. I feel like the big part of that is the village. And so, you know, when you're talking about um, people quitting and, and people not um, being able to sustain a, a consistent greatness, it is because, again, going back to the vision, what's the vision? If your vision is to, is, is, outcome related so let's just get real specific let's say my vision is i want to make fifty thousand dollars over the course of the first five months well that's outcome related so when that's outcome related when you don't hit 50 or if you don't hit fifty thousand dollars over five months discouragement automatically sets in so when we're talking about vision this is again why i'm not talking about what you do but how you do what you do and not what you are as a person, but who you are as a person. So instead of saying, I want to make $50,000 over the course of the next five months, I would rather say, I want to be the hardest working person over the course of the next five months. Who determines that? Nobody but me. And what? And now what does that look like? So what does hardest working look like? It looks like me um, reaching out to 25 people every day. It looks like Here's what I'm doing to uh, increase my, my, my knowledge about the product that I'm offering. Like, so now I'm breaking it down and they all boil down to me. So now instead of having outcome goals, I have process goals. And the process 
is the journey, is the quest, is the adventure that is never ending. There is no destination to that. So yeah. even when you get to 50,000, it's not about the outcome of getting to 50,000. It's about the process that it took me to get there. That's amazing. Somebody go in the chat and say process because <laughs> if you don't hear anything else, this is a journey of, of process because when I get to legend, people, and I say when because I'm going to get there, but it's really not about, for me, um, Jason, what I'm learning is being able to accept the, the gratitude and the compliments and things like that. But, you know, we don't do it for that reason. We, we're in the journey right now and the process. And I'm learning a lot about myself that I can wake up every day and be consistent in this process of the business. Many of us on here, we are very consistent. But we consistently do things, usually for other people. We, we go to work every single day and we consistently do the same thing every single day. But when we get into this business, Jason, our consistency is actually simple. We talked about that. What is simple is not easy. And everybody says, man, Megan, I love your presentations. If you listen to my presentation, Jason, it's going to sound a lot like our conversations. That you're going to hear pieces of people, Robert Dean, pieces of you. And one of the things that I tell people is wealth creation is simple, not easy. Because what is, it's not synonymous. What's simple is not always easy. And what's easy is not always simple to do. And we have to get into the process. And we're going we're gonna to get to where we need to be. Some of us are going to get to legend in this year. Some of us next year. And one of uh, my mentors, millionaire, said, I said, what do I need to do to get to where you are? He said, be here 24 months from now. Like, mm -hmm. enjoy the journey and the process of what it is that you're doing. So I, I love that. I mean, and I'm going to keep speaking it. Uh, you have a book out right now, Jason Wells, the author. The thing hold, but hold on, hold on. You you are tripping right now. Let me let me throw this in just as we talk about process. You know, everybody's and I love the the engagement of having people type into the chat. I see process, process, trust the process, get into the process. And here's the thing about process. Everybody talked about trust the process, trust the process, but very few people trust the process. <laughs> it, it's, it's absurd. So that's a cliche term. And the simple thing to do when you're talking about simple and easy, the simple thing to do is to trust the process. The easy thing to do is to not. <laughs> that's, that's an intentional pause. The, yeah. the simple thing to do is to trust the process, but the easy thing to do is to not, because the easy thing to do is to get distracted by things that take me off my path, to, to uh, whether that's doing something that someone else thinks that I should be doing, or doing something because that's what I've always done, or doing something for external reasons. Like, one of my good friends, Leslie Peters, she's somebody that I've had the opportunity to learn from and grow with and, and really uh, who you hear now today on May 13th, 2020 is a direct correlation of who I've been able to be around over the course of the last year and a half, two years. Um, but she has a phrase that says, life is a quest, not a test. And, and so much of our lives, we relate to being a test. And when I say the word test, immediately what comes to our minds are pass, fail, good, bad, grades. Like it, it's something that's rooted into someone else's judgment of us. But if I view life as a quest, and this is where you know how I am about words, like not even just talking about word challenges, but always moving forward. The journey isn't always forward. The quest isn't always forward. Sometimes the quest is taking a step to the left or the right. Or sometimes the quest is even taking a step backwards, but realizing that that step backwards is only a part of the quest. It's not a test where I'm being judged on, ooh, that was a backward step. Just to put it out there, just to be transparent, you're talking to somebody right here who has filed bankruptcy, who has 
foreclosed on, on not one but two houses one because i didn't understand foreclosure and one because i just let it go because i already had another house and somebody that's being has been divorced all three of those things in society's eyes look like steps backwards but all three of those things were temporary moves backwards only to allow me to get over. I use the analogy of driving a car. We've all gotten on the highway, traffic moving slow in the right-hand lane, and you actually have to slow down to let the car pass you just so you can get all the way over to the left side and pass everybody. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Slowing, <laughs> slowing down slowing down, and, or, or having to take a backward step. Backward step is not negative step. It's all dependent on how you choose to look at it. Wow. That is so, so very true. But some people get so caught up in the backward step and beat themselves up and they just stay there, stuck. Vision, vision, vision. You're beating yourself up because you're letting other people, you're letting your thoughts tie you into your, their judgment. So how you see people, I, I promise I'll let you get into your author thing in a second. I, I, I just want to throw no. this out there. No, go ahead. Uh, I had this on my coaching call this morning. This is a quote that I wish I was smart enough to come up with, but and I'll say it twice just so people can can really let it sink in. But it's a quote by a guy named Cooley. He's one of these philosophers, guys that are much smarter than me. And here's here's the quote. I am not who I think I am. I am not who you think I am. I am who I think you think I am. Mm. I'll say that again. I am not who I think I am. I am not who you think I am. I am who I think that you think that I am. So we live in this this double world of projecting what we think other people think about us and letting that direct how we move. When in actuality, you'll never know what somebody else truly thinks. So why are you letting that dictate how you move through life? This is not about anybody else. This starts with you. And self-love is not selfish. We have to take care of self before we can take, put, some, put your oxygen mask on first. That's one of the first things they tell you when you get on a plane. Because if you don't put your oxygen mask on, that baby that you're traveling with or that older person that you're traveling with, they won't be able to be here because you're not here. You have to take care of first. And we have to understand that self-love is not selfish. Selfish is only when you do it out of disregard for other people. Mm. That is so true. That is so true. And you know, like in this, in this process that I'm in right now, you know, I've been in it for a while and you even question uh, or asked me the question if this was really, I was talking a lot last year a couple months ago before well before i not even a couple months ago i guess it was right before i came into this company um in the middle of march is you would ask me the question just really about is 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 that what i really want to do is are these the things that are going to make me happy because i was getting ready to take over a company and i was disturbed <laughs> in my spirit and can you just speak really quickly on when you talked about we're always asking other people what we should do when we already know when I forget how you put it, but um, can you just speak on that? Uh, we ask people, but we already know what we're supposed to do. We kind of need somebody else's validation to the things that we already know. Yeah, it's, it's just advice. When we talk about advice, advice is that to which we already know the answer, but we act like we don't. <laughs> like that's what happens we, when we when we ask people for advice you already know what the answer is you just want someone else to either validate your thoughts or to talk you off the ledge like, it, it's real it's as simple as that and so when you're talking about bringing in other people um of course you want to have the valued opinions and the and the views of others because i feel like contradiction within the room is healthy as, as long as it's that, as long as it's healthy. And, and what we've done as a society is get to a point where contradiction is no longer healthy. Contradiction is, like, if you want to go to the far end of the spectrum, contradiction has now led into hate. 
mm-hmm. which is absurd. Um, I just got an email. Let me just check and make sure. Oh, I am. I'm missing the call. I need to jump off. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, no. I knew we were. I I slotted you for an hour, so I know we're we're over that that point and we'll talk more jason's going to be on and i know you got to go he's got a book i'm going to talk about this i'm going to talk about him as the speaker um and then we're i have to hop off too because i have a call but um we're going to talk about him as the author we're going to talk about him as the, the experience teller and what's next but we'll talk about that next month so Megan, Mr. let's let's do it again for the people. I'll send you all of my ways that people can connect with me. I appreciate everybody saying thank you in the chat. Like really simple, um, through any platform, whether it's my website or whether it's some social network and Instagram or LinkedIn or something like this. I am very specific in saying this. I know the the cultural no- norm is to use the word follow. I don't want you to follow me. I want you to lead with me. So I'll send you all of the different things, different platforms, Instagram handles and all of that. And yeah, I do. I just do. I just want to add value to people's lives. So I appreciate this opportunity for the platform. We'll, uh, we'll continue. Thank you so much. I will talk to you soon. All right. Later. Sorry I had to jump off like that. No, Bye. no, you're fine. I, I knew we had an hour. I was looking at the time too. Thank you so much. All right. Later. All right. Later. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to unmute you guys. Thank you for the 400 of you. I do have to tell you something. So I told people to stick around until the end because I had to tell you guys something. And I understand some people had to jump off. Some people have to remember are still working. They have other things that they have to do and they can't hang out. But the 430 some of you staying on here, um, I'm super excited. I mean, I really have grown a million miles since I've met, um, since I've met Jason. It makes me so super excited. Every time that I really, honestly, guys, I don't know what to do. I listen and that's, that's important, but you have to make sure that you're listening to the right people. And there are some people's phone calls I don't answer or I stop telling people things because they were giving me permission to to fail. I'm going to be honest. Oh yeah. You know, I know it's hard. Just take a break. You know, those people who are keep telling you to take a break, just take a break. You know, don't worry about it. You don't have to do it. I had people like that in my life and I really, I needed to, to read a book. I had stopped reading cause I was teaching English. So I wasn't reading cause I was, I was analyzing the books that I had to teach and I didn't even have time to read. I read this book called Eat, Pray, Love. If you ever get a chance to read that book, it kind of got me through. And in this book, there was a quote that says, don't practice falling apart. Practice keeping it together. (laughs) Do not practice falling apart. Practice keeping it together. And I said, oh, that is so amazing. Sometimes you do have to cry, though. You need a good cry. But I fell apart for like 20 minutes when I'd seen Tradera because I'm like, oh my gosh, they're going to take all my people. This is what I was thinking when I had seen Tradera. They're going to take all my people. My business is going to crash. I thought that for like 20 minutes. And then you know what I did? I was like, I'm going to have to (laughs) partner. I'm going to have to see the opportunity here because I wasn't seeing the opportunity. And then I pulled myself together and said, I'm just, I'll just take my team over there. We'll still be over here, but we're going to be over, over in this other place too. And it was the best decision that I could have ever made. So let me tell you really quickly. And then um, if anybody has a question, I know it's 1225 and I have a gazillion flyers to make. I'm going to teach you guys how to do them too. But um, let me tell you this really quickly. The um, amazing part is, is that when I met Jason and we're, you know, we're in college and things like that, we lost our best friend right here. Uh, It was one of the worst experiences of my life, but it did set me on a path of purpose. And I lost a lot of friends and kids and things like that along the way. And I had to start looking at what I could do. Jason said something that was really powerful. Um, my, my My vision and my purpose is to, to add value to people's lives. (laughs) That's it. And all of us are going to do that in different ways. That is the takeaway that I want you guys to go out today after I tell you this 
add value to someone's life today in even the most simple way, okay? Um, and, and I'm not even gonna roll out what my biggest vision, one of my biggest visions is because I'm not there yet, but it's gonna happen. I'm gonna be telling you guys about it probably in the next like 30 or 60 days is when I'm gonna roll it out because we are gonna change how people see business. We're gonna change how people see each other and we're gonna, this movement that we're gonna start, I'm, I'm telling you now, I'm speaking it into existence. We are gonna reach a million people, right? 2020, we are gonna be on the journey. We will reach a million people or we're gonna get really, really close to it. And you guys are gonna be instrumental and people are gonna know our names. We'll live forever. It's not about people patting us on the back. It's about leaving a legacy. And I'm telling you that when I hit legend, and I roll out one of my visions I've been working on for, I don't even know how long, it's going to change everyone's life. And I'm excited about that. So I'm running really hard because I, my, my vision will help a lot of people and add value to a lot of people's lives, a lot of people. Um, so I'm excited. I do wanna add this really quickly. Um, I talked to the owners. The owners called me on the phone, both of them. I want you to understand, this is what I wanted to tell you guys. I want you to understand how monumental it is to what we're getting ready to do next, okay? When you get into a company, you want to, I always tell people that you wanna get in and you wanna plant your flag and you want to find a way to, you gotta get into the inner circle in these companies because I've never been surprised. People always say, um, you know, this company scammed me, blah, blah, blah. I've never been scammed in a company. Every time I get into a company, I figure out a way to get into the inner circle. So I always know everything because my team is always going to be taken care of. If I know something, guess what? You guys are going to know something. And we will never be in a, in a position where we're kind of taken off guard because I'm, and now we're in the inner circle team. So Give me some love because the owners called me on the phone and I have their personal phone numbers and they talked about us. They said, man, your team is doing amazing things. Your team is, is really growing. Our team is, is organized. We're an organized group right now. And they said, listen, whatever you need, here's my phone number. Just call me. And, and I'm not saying you got to pick and choose. You don't call people in that position for every single thing. But the great thing for us is, is that we know that we're in the inner circle now. Our organization is in the inner circle to the point where Cody and Easton said, man, we're gonna learn so much from, from you and from your team. They said, they're traders. We don't know, they said that we don't know anything about running a, a big convention. Maybe you can help us. Well, of course we can. <laughs> Of course we can help you uh, put together a leader's retreat. Of course we can help you plan the entire um, big event that we're gonna be having when we do get out of, uh, out of the, the quarantine. We're not coming out right away, but of course we can do that. And it was a genuine conversation of, thank you so much. We know who you are. We know who your sister is in your organization, but we had no idea. They also said, let me in on all the changes that are going to happen. Over the next three months, we're going to see Tradera transform into the number one Forex company in the world. Okay? We're going to reach hundreds of thousands of people. We're going to take this company to $100 million. And guess what? When they go to $100 million, where do you think we're going to go? And for those of you who are struggling right now and you say, man, I haven't recruited one person, it's coming. Because at some point, you, because you are trying and you're launching your business and you're peaking interest, people see that, including myself. At some point, we'll have so many people that it won't matter because all of the people who are doing are gonna be taken care of. All of my sharks are gonna be taken care of. And shark doesn't mean that you hit a rank. Please understand that. And I hear some of you guys say, well, I just hit founder. You didn't just 
hit anything. Well, I mean, I haven't signed up. I've only signed up one person. Really? The power of one. And when I roll this out, and I'm not even going to, I want to talk about it so bad, but I'm not going to because it's not time yet. The power of one. I'm telling you right now, if one of you will chase a hundred people, not just 10, you got to set out to touch 100 people or, and they may all say no to you. That's your, your homework for today, for this week. I need you to set out to reach a hundred people and a hundred of those people might be in social media. They may be on, um, in your church group. They may be from your family members and you're not calling them to ask them about business. I'm talking about, you're going to reach out to a hundred people. That's my, could be my May birthday present. Do it in May. I'm not telling you to do it all in one day, but you can. It's the power of one reaching out to a hundred. Okay. This is your, your takeaway in the month of May for my birthday. My birthday's tomorrow. Okay. Reagan's birthday is tomorrow. She's always like, stop saying it's your birthday. I'm sorry. Our birthday. Oh, she's on here. Oh, hi, Reagan. Hey there. <laughs> Our birthday. She said, get the my out of your, you're right. I need to not say my, it's our virtual Wall Street. It's our birthday. The power of one, because you cannot get to 100 people if you do not get to one person. You have to start with one. And then two. And then three. Keep track, though. I need you guys to write it down, though. Don't haphazardly be reaching out to people. Because guess what you're going to be doing? Developing a list of people where you are going to intentionally listen to what I'm saying on purpose. You're going to intentionally add value to someone's life and you don't have to talk to them about business. Just reach out to them. Hey, I was thinking about you. Hope you have a good day. Something send somebody a, a smiley face, a, a kissy face. You don't even have to use words, use an emoji if you have to and intentionally reach out to a hundred people this month and write it down. At the end of this month, I just want to see your list of people that you intentionally added value to someone's life this month. Because I want to tell you this, and I'm not going to leave on a terrible note, but my daughter is amazing. She's 13, plays on the national volleyball team. And one of her friends, committed suicide over this quarantine and nobody knows why. And all the kids are trying to figure out like, what did we miss? And we don't know what that little girl was going through. She was a beautiful little girl. I didn't ever see anything wrong with her, but I didn't really know her either, but she was always happy and smiling. And my daughter is a little tan girl. I can't say a little black girl cause she's very tan. Um, but there weren't a lot of kids of color because my daughter plays on the national volleyball team and, and volleyball tends to be not a, a melanated sport all the time. Okay. And she didn't, no one treated her badly or anything like that, but she just was feeling like uncomfortable because it was super expensive. We drove an hour every single Tuesday and Thursday to take her to practice. So she didn't know any of those girls. They were all very top notch volleyball players. She didn't know if she was going to make the team. She had all these, concerns and worries. And then this little, little girl, who's not really little, cause she was like five, 10 or 11, um, befriended my daughter and was her, um, partner. They worked out together and no one knows what happened over the quarantine of this little girl being stuck in the house. Who knows what, what went wrong, but she took her own life. And I was talking to my daughter about it and it's like, you just never know what your words could say to one person, the power of one, the power of the 1% club. You know how we're going to get to the 1%? We're going to touch one person at a time. So write this down. Listen, if one will chase 100 and 100 will chase 1,000, what could 1 million people do? 
if one will chase 100 and 100 will chase 1,000 collectively, what could one million people do? And it's part of my sister and I, it's the journey, the vision that we had a long time ago that started with my sister, and I'm not even going to talk about it, but it started with her vision. And we have this goal to reach a million people. But in my last business, I started two businesses ago, I only had one person, Byron Jennings. And then Byron reached a whole bunch of people. And then I started to get my wings. Then last year, Reagan and I went into this company and people started to notice not who we were or are, but they started to notice that we truly do care about people. And the, the vision that I have of creating a new Wall Street, there's actually a vision connected to that that was first. But I said, I'm going to have to create a new Wall Street first or I'm not going to be able to do the original vision. But you know how sometimes you cannot bring it out yet because it's not time? It's not time. But I do want you guys to understand that we hit a milestone in our business last night, all of us. We are in the inner circle. We are connected to the ownership. We're going to make plans. Our team is going to have a say-so in what this company looks like in 2020, 2021, 2022. These young guys are in their 20s. And they said, people don't understand that we've been doing this for almost 10 years. That means that they were 14 years old. Some of my young people don't even live to be 14 years old. So that meant a lot to me that if these young men can be rolling and do, encouraging and he's, they said, people think that we're going to just quit and run away because we got some few scammers in here, or we got a glitch in the server. And they told me, they said it was the worst time of their life so far was when the server went down, the holding tank went down and they're 24 and they're weathering these storms. We have to pray for our leaders because they're, 24 years old, some of you guys have suits in the closet older than them. So we have to not be so quick to be frustrated with our leadership or where our company's going. And you guys have to, you got to check people from this point on because we're in the inner circle now, which means that these owners are our business partners. We're in business with them for real, for real now. Okay. So when someone is talking about our opportunity and what's the ownership doing and this, this, and that. Guess what they're doing? Working, building an empire, about to roll out um, the, the best Forex platform that you have ever seen. They said, if you guys like the back office now, you're going to be blown away at what it's getting ready to look like. All of the tools. They said, we don't have any desire to rob our community and charge them more than $99. We're going to give them everything that they could possibly ask for, for $99. Value. And we're going to be able to, to reach the masses. All of us, we just have to be patient. And I'm not going to keep talking because, you know, I'll go on and on on my soapbox preaching. But listen, we're in the inner circle now. Let's act like it, okay? Let's behave like it. Let's think like it, okay? Think and grow rich. We're going to act and grow rich. So add value to, to one person's life today or two or 10 and don't tell them about your business. <laughs> Just let them know, Hey, I was thinking about you. Hope you're doing well. You know, hope you have a great day. <laughs> Thank you. Galaxy 10. We love your soapbox. Reagan Lynch. Do you have anything that you want to say? Hey there, I have a baby in the background. So, um, I don't, I missed the first part because I was finishing up a, a three-way call. So sorry for, I jumped on a little bit late, but I did hear uh, Mr. Jason Wells. Absolutely love him. Thank you for bringing him on. Um, he is not a motivator. He's an in, inspiration, you know, and that's totally different. So, so excited that everyone got to be introduced to him. Uh, but I don't know if you announced that it's Robert Dean's birthday today. Did you already announce it? I did. So that's probably one person that you guys need to, you can get into the Global Money Team um, Facebook page. So if you can't reach him, um, go to the Global and go into the chat too. So I could tell him to go in there. I'm going to put him in the Telegram. Go onto our Facebook page today and shout him out. Give him a happy birthday. Because again, if it weren't for Jason, on the 
purpose, giving me purpose. And if it weren't for Robert, giving me purpose also, but also showing me that my purpose needs a financial boost. <laughs> um, I don't know if I would be where I, I know I wouldn't. I, w I would eventually get here, but it would probably take me 40 years wandering around in the wilderness. You guys will catch that later, right? Um, but it is uh, Robert's birthday. Give Robert some love um, today, if you guys can. Um, shoot it, uh, you know, shoot him a happy birthday on his Facebook, the Global Money Team. It's inside the playbook. If you want to get into the his Facebook group and give him a whole bunch of happy birthdays, you could do that. Reagan, did you want to? Did you um, have something else you wanted to add before I hopped off? Oh, I just wanted to say, you know, with it being Robert's birthday, I just wanted to, um, so that way if he listens to the end of this, let him know just how much I appreciate him, us being able to learn from him. I've been working with a lot of people and some people, you know, I've had to yell at. <laughs> we're, we're coaches, right, Megan? Yeah. You know, I, I have to yell at them, but they're like, I feel like they're so nice when you do it, but, you know, but I'm, I'm so serious because we wouldn't be where we are um, learning how to build, learning how to um, work the system. Can you hear me okay? Yep, I can. Learning how to work, um, actually work this industry um, the way that we do and duplicate if it wasn't for Robert. So people who um, have come in and they're used to, you know, bringing in a lot of people or thousands of people or they, there's nothing wrong with funnels and those are great. They're going to really be awesome when those things come out and build our business. But when you look at this, this is an industry, a relationship building. Robert taught us that. Now, if we never, we wouldn't have met him. We really haven't learned it from anyone else that's been in the industry. And it may seem, you know, archaic or like a dinosaur, but that's the reason why we retain our people. You know, that's the reason why we have over 8,000 people in our organization. So if you're listening and you haven't followed the system of launching your business, circling your top 10, ps 3 in those people, getting your flyer for your launch, inviting those people and following up, that's it. That's all you have to do is go through, you know, hell week, you know, rush week. That and it's really great because you are going to, you're going to meet a lot of people, but Robert, I thank him so much. I wish him the happiest birthday. You know, he's not going to take a day off because it's his birthday. Probably he's still going to be working the system and enjoying it. But you guys have to understand, like, he's the one that taught us to do what we're doing. So we're just following great leadership. So we just ask that you guys follow the system if you're not, because you will be successful. We didn't start out, you know, we brought, like Megan said, eight people over. We talked to our key eight people. We didn't bring a whole company over. We haven't launched our email campaign. None of that stuff. And some people will say that we haven't. We're telling you guys to do exactly what we did and be consistent and just teach your new people. You have the playbook. You're going to have the web page. You guys have more tools um, than we did to share with all the new people so utilize those tools. Thank Robert Dean, you know, for, for the system that's going to allow you to really change your financial life. Awesome. That couldn't have said it any better. And I probably wouldn't have said it like that because you're very <laughs> strategic. And that's, I love when Reagan can put things together and, and jump on here. Cause if you guys, you hear from her a lot because she's off. I don't even She's off running her own team, running the system. So Reagan, thank you so much for just putting that, that, and putting it that way, because we did, we learned the system from him. So we just have to, to run it and keep it simple. So thank you so much, Reagan. Um, again, I want you guys to go out and be great on purpose. Okay. Today and forever be great on purpose, add value to someone's life, write it down though. I want to see your list of those people that you reached out to. So you can, it leaves breadcrumbs and you can see, man, I did talk to a lot of people. I do know a lot of people. I did add value to a lot of people's lives. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much. I will get the, the coaching sessions out. And I know I promised you guys my PDF slides and I didn't do it. So I'm, I'm going to do it right this second.
Okay. Well, thank you so much. And I hope all of you have a super fantastic day in my Dr. PK voice. Thank you so much. See you guys. Have at a super fantastic day. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Megan. You're welcome. Thank thank you. Thanks, Megan. Best thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Megan, and thank let's you, go. Let's go, Zora. <laughs> thank, you, thank, you, Zora. Megan. Thank, you, thank you, Reagan. Thank you, Reagan. Good night. Good night. Hey, Reagan, where are you going to put your PDF slides? Um, on the Facebook in Telegram. Thank you, Megan. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thank you, Megan. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Megan. Have a You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Reagan. Thank you, Reagan. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Megan and Reagan. Happy birthday to both of you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. JBC says, says, what up, Megan? And thank you. <laughs> thanks, Megan. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. All right. See you guys. Thank you. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Wow. <laughs>